In the news, two new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed in Nigeria. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, one additional case was found in Lagos State, while another was discovered in Oshun State. A statement by the NCDC reveals that both cases are travelers who returned to Nigeria in the last seven days. As of 7 a.m. 25th March, there are 46 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. Two have been discharged, while one person has died. Joining us via phone is Dr. Abiodun Oshibamawo, Medical Director, Reddington Hospital, and also Dr. Tokumbo Babajide, Occupational Physician, Reddington Multi Specialist Hospital. Thank you for joining us at this hour. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, I want to ask um, doc, Dr. Oshibamawo, as Medical Director, has your job description changed considerably in the last couple of weeks, and in what way? Okay, good afternoon, and thank you for having me once again on the program. Um, this is a very difficult time, you know, for the and even for the country as a whole, because of this COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So, yes, um, my job description has changed last, you know, couple of weeks. Um, I've been involved in um, quality control and infectious disease management. I've uh, been having of a meeting with other members of staff regards to the 19 pandemic. I've been trying to raise awareness among um, other members of staff. So yes, you know, my job is going to change, you know, in the last you know, couple of weeks. Have you been faced with as compared with your counterparts in another part of the world? In other words, how is the Nigerian and predicament unique? Mm -hmm. Well, um, first of all, I would like to say that um, the preparedness for the COVID-19 initially was low by the state mm -hmm. and the federal government. However, since the announcement of the index case in Lagos, the pace has picked up both at the state and the federal level. Um, there has been creation of a more testing center. I think initially there were just three testing centers, one in Lagos, um, in Edo State, and then Federal uh, Capital Capuja. But I think there are about five, um, oh, there are more testing centers right now. Now to um, um, Dr. Dokumba Doku Bajere. We, we all know doctors are on the front line at, at the moment, but what is the unique burden of the occupational physician at this time? The, the burden for us as occupational physicians to keep the health of to ensure and to carry on their responsibilities and care for caring for those that may have to care for the patient's normal patient we have to ensure that it's easy, we have to cut up the testing equipment. We have broken one to find for each ultimate is divided at this time. And with regards to that, I will see that in this. And I will speak to those who can see We do not have enough in this part of the world. So that is where the government is talking right now to make sure that the now, what, what, what is the policy of your hospital towards addressing this pandemic as you encounter it on a daily basis? Uh, bear in mind, we're being encouraged to maintain a state of lockdown and social distancing. So right now, Nigeria is in a state of social lockdown, but we as a hospital to provide our as much as possible, you don't want them to come if they do not have symptoms. But when they have symptoms, they are able to take care of them. Also, we will ensure that only those that are required to come are not come. So visitors are not welcome right now. One visitor to a patient is all required, so that we don't have a new exposure of our patients. And we encourage our patients to also come. When they have symptoms, call us, go to on the phone with us. You ensure that you are so we are open to our patients because they are priority. 
Now, Dr. Abiodun, that the average man or woman may not seek out the services of a private hospital such as yours, or are we mistaken in this assumption? Um, honestly speaking, Reddington hospitals do not discriminate about who comes to see us at the hospital. Uh, we cater for different categories of uh, Nigerians that come to the hospital. So um, they are free to come and see us in the hospital and we'll speak to everybody with our customers. So are we already of a boarding public hospital set up? Mm. Sorry, come again. Now, are you able to provide any kind of support for our already overburdened public hospital setup? Um, let me put it this way. Um, slowly, the responsibility rests on the state government. Um, we can just, you know, support the state government in helping to raise the level of awareness amongst, you know, um, Nigerians. Um, encouraging them, you know, to observe the stay at home, and um, once they have any symptoms of uh, that may seem like that of the COVID-19, they should report to the hospital and be checked out. And if there's a case of anybody who has uh, traveled to any of those countries, they should self-isolate and call the local um, health authority. So that's the kind of uh, support that we can give right now. Dr. Tokumbo, how prepared do you feel we are as a nation from a medical perspective? Yes. So I, I, in terms of preparation, I would want to say that this disease has caught everybody going away. But I think for countries in Africa, because we are getting rather late because of the disease, we'll be able to buy time. So in terms of preparation, I will not say we are completely prepared. And this is why I'm saying so. So right now, there is a contact tracing. There is a lot of information. There is awareness. Our government is encouraging lockdown and encouraging self-isolation for those that have tried with this case, which is a very level of preparation in terms of prevention. So that's a good job. And why that's a good job is because when we prevent, they don't have to deal with treatment because we are not prepared to treat. I don't know if you understand. We are not prepared to treat, not because we don't want to protect, but we are not. Our health system is fragile. So our health system cannot handle it. So our best bet, yes. and our hope right now, is that everything that is being put in place will be adhered to so that we can break the chain of transmission of the disease. Now, when you, when you say down. that, Dr. Tokumba, when you do say that, when you do say that, is it, is it a lack of capacity, a lack of manpower, or the infrastructure? Yes, so that's a very good... Can you come again? When you do say that we're not, we're not prepared, is it, is it for the lack of infrastructure or for capacity of manpower? Yes, so in terms of, you know, and you and I know how fragile our health system is, in a country that has less than 1% of GDP allocated in health, I will use the word your imagination. We are not equipped. And in terms of training, it's inadequate for the healthcare professionals in Nigeria. In terms of manpower, I would say it's not adequate as well because of the injury. So, in terms of treatment, we don't have the capacity. All right. Dr. Abiodun, we, we appreciate that we are uniquely challenged in areas such as availability of test kits. Is this policy of self-quarantine an effective one under this um, given circumstance that we find ourselves? Um, you know, lately we've been hearing in the news um, the number of confirmed cases have been going up. And um, the policy of self-quarantine is a very, very effective, you know, means of preventing the spread. You know, the COVID-19 virus is spread by, you know, air droplets, and there's also a new one now that is spread by community spread. You don't need to have the symptoms. So it is very, very important that if you suspect anybody may be having the COVID-19 you know, um, symptoms, to so self-quarantine themselves for at least 14 days. And let's see if the person is going to develop signs and symptoms of the COVID-19. So I would say that it is a very, very effective way 
of preventing the spread of the COVID-19 virus. All right, quickly, how would you recommend that the, the average man or woman or even child proceeds to effect self-quarantine if they're required to do so? Well, you know, the thing is that um, they need to have a place in the house whereby they are there alone 24-7. They need to have a means of being fed regularly and also to have some recreational time so that they don't get too bored about you know being you know in self-isolation so the feeling is very important and getting themselves engaged in activities and uh, for the 14 days that they will be on you know self-quarantine so i think um, there should also be some family support also during that you know self-quarantine period Dr. Abionu Osibama, Medical Director of Reddington Hospital, thank you very much for joining us and for your contribution. And also Dr. Tukumba Bajide, Occupational Physician, Reddington Malta Specialist Hospital, thank you for joining us and for your contribution. Thank you for Hi. having me.